Thanks, Chris. Good to be with you. Let's start with the growing controversy over the killing of those four Americans in Libya. Here is what Vice President Biden had to say about that in Thursday's debate. They wanted but, more security there. Well, we weren't told they wanted more security again. We did not know they wanted more security again. But David, just the day before, several State Department officials testified under oath that there were repeated requests for more security that were rejected. What is the vice president talking about? I think the vice president was talking about what the White House knew. There are embassies all over the world and installations all over the world and these requests go into the uh, security professionals at the State Department and there's no doubt that uh, some of these uh, matters went into the security department at the state uh, uh, security uh, agency at the State Department but it didn't come to the White House and that's what the white uh, the vice president was responding to so we're now getting into a, a, a definition of what the word we means. When the vice president says we, he's not talking about the Obama administration because the question wasn't about what you knew. It's that there were requests for more security. Biden is not talking about the Obama administration. He's not talking about uh, the State Department. He's just talking about himself and the president. No, I, I think, Chris, uh, again, what he was talking about was what uh, he, he, the president, knew because these matters were being handled at the State Department. But listen, here's the fundamental thing. Nobody, there's nobody on this planet who is more concerned and, and more interested in getting to the bottom of this than the president of the United States. He feels personal responsibility for every representative he sends uh, around the world. He knew Chris Stevens. Uh, he admired Chris Stevens. Uh, so, uh, look, we want to get to to the bottom of it, and the, the first order of business is to bring to justice those who, uh, who committed this heinous act, and secondly, find out what, what went wrong and what adjustments need to be made uh, to further secure our diplomat mats around the world. Well, let me ask you directly. Does the president take personal responsibility for the fact that repeated requests for more security were made and were rejected, and that that may have contributed to the death of those four Americans? Does he take personal responsibility for that? Chris, at the, top, at the top line level, the President of the United States is responsible for everything that happens uh, under his, uh, on his watch. Uh, these were judgments that were made by the security uh, folks at the State Department. And of course, we're going to review that whole process and see how those decisions are made, why those decisions were made, and how we, uh, how we adjust in the future to make sure uh, that we're giving our diplomats the maximum protection we can. The reality is that many of these folks serve in dangerous places in the world and you can't you can't a hundred percent guarantee anything but we want to get as close to a hundred percent as we can and that's why these investigations are moving forward I, I want to ask you about this question of personal secure uh, personal responsibility by the president because in the debate the vice president also blamed the intelligence community for the false reports that came out uh, immediately after about the idea that this was a spontaneous a, a demonstration that ran amok. In fact, a top State Department official said this week, he was asked about that, and this is what he said. That is a question that you would have to ask others. That was not the idea of a sp spontaneous demonstration. That was not our conclusion. Question, with all this finger pointing going on at the State Department, going on at the, uh, towards the intelligence community, whatever happened to the principle, the buck stops with the president. Well, as I said, the president is responsible for everything that happens uh, uh, on his watch. The reality—I mean, it isn't the—it uh, isn't us or anyone else who's suggesting that that's what the intelligence was at the time. The intelligence community itself, and Director Clapper uh, has said that. And in fact, Chris, uh, you had people from the State Department testifying under oath that uh, on the day, for example, when Secretary Rice, uh, when Ambassador Rice appeared on your program and other programs, anyone uh, would have said the same thing that she said because that was the intelligence we were receiving and it's not a matter of blaming that's just the fact sometimes intelligence uh, has to catch up with the reality on the ground this was one of those cases well but but that it doesn't quite square with the facts sir because Charlene Lamb who was a top State Department official said in that sworn hearing that she was in real-time communication real-time communication with the people on the ground in Benghazi so there was a difference of opinion between what the intelligence community was saying and what the State Department was saying. The State Department official, as we said, said that was never our conclusion that there was a spontaneous protest, which raises the, this question. How soon after the attack 
Did the president meet with the National Security Council, with people from state, with people from the department, or the director of national intelligence, with all of the various people to try to sort out what happened in Benghazi? Look, we are sorting out what happened there. Uh, understand that the president, the day after the uh, the day after the attack, called it a, an act of terror and uh, and charged everyone uh, with responsibility to get to the bottom of what happened. Why and, and and as the first order of business to make sure we bring to justice uh, the terrorists who were responsible uh, for this act. So the president has uh, reacted as you'd want the president uh, to react to this. But just what? getting back to your point on the State Department, just a second, Chris. You uh, you talk about the State Department spokesman. You had pe you had representatives of the State Department testifying under oath uh, this week before Congress, and they said what I said to you, which is that anyone based on the intelligence that they were uh, that they had at the time would have said what what the administration said, what Ambassador Rice said uh, uh, the day after the attack. It, the reason I, I ask this is because you say, well, the, the president made a statement. Yes, the president made a statement. And then he went off to a fundraiser or to a campaign stop in Nevada. Question, before he went to the fundraiser in Nevada, did he meet with his National Security Council to try to sort out these shifting stories because state says they never said it was a spontaneous demonstration. In Intel did, you're quite right. Did he meet with the National Security Council before he went to campaigning in Nevada? Chris, I assure you that the president was in contact with all those who had uh, who had information and responsibility in the national security chain about this incident. Again, let me stress: there isn't anyone on this planet who feels a greater sense of responsibility for our diplomats, for our service people, who takes this more personally than the president of the United States. And he is determined to get to the bottom of what happened, to bring these uh, killers to justice, these terrorists to justice, and to make sure that whatever adjustments we have to make, we make. Well, you you talk about personal responsibility and the president's care. Let, let's look at what deputy campaign manager Stephanie Cutter had to say this week about the attack in Libya that killed the four Americans. The entire reason uh, that uh, this has become the, the you know, political topic it is, it's because of Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. Do you really believe, David, that the concern over Libya is just politics that's been ginned up by the Romney campaign? Look, I think there are two separate issues. Obviously, there's a serious issue here. We've just been discussing it for several uh, minutes, and it's, it's, it's an essential matter that we get to the bottom of what happened, uh, that we bring the, the terrorists to justice. Uh, this president is totally committed to that. There's a separate issue of how Governor Romney has, uh, has handled this. I, I refer you back to the famous 47 percent uh, tape uh, in the spring, where Governor Romney told in, in private, told his supporters that he was waiting for a crisis, waiting for an incident to jump in on, uh, on national security, and he did. He jumped in right away the day of these uh, attacks with half information in a way that was denounced by both Republicans and Democrats, and there's no doubt that he's working hard to exploit uh, this issue, and I would point to the fact that the, this morning uh, in Bloomberg News, uh, you, uh, Chris Stevens' dad uh, said that he regretted that that people were trying to exploit uh, this issue. And I think we ought to follow the lead of the ambassador's family and allow this investigation uh, to run and get to the bottom of it and make the adjustments that are necessary. By the way, in wait, that wait, same... Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. David, 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 wait, wait. David, wait, wait. David, wait a minute. Interview, you, this Mr. is the first U.S. ambassador that has been killed since 1979. Susan Rice came on this show and five others and gave the American people a story that turned out to not to be true. And you're saying that we shouldn't discuss this? That we should wait and for the investigation to be completed? No, no. That's no. what you just said. That's obviously, that's obviously, Chris, calm down. That's obviously not what I'm saying. I just said, I just, you just said we should follow, wait a minute. Minutes. You just said I'm we should follow discuss, the lead of Chris, uh, of happy, Chris Stevens' I'm, father. I'm happy. I'm happy to discuss it with you, uh, and I do think that it's worthy uh, of discussion. I think that's different than the manner in which Governor Romney has conducted himself. And it's not just me who uh, attacked him for the way he handled this. He was roundly criticized by people from right to left, the Republican establishment and the Democratic You're establishment. You're talking about what he said the, the day he after the attack. For the way he You're talking about what he said the day after the attack. Issue. I don't think anybody so, I mean, is that, criticizing him for what issue. he's saying now, except the Obama campaign. Well. 
I, I, I'm, I'm just telling you that from the beginning of this issue, before any facts were known, he was uh, cravenly trying to exploit it. And look, that's politics. I understand that, Chris. I understand the whole deal. We're in the last three weeks of a campaign, and of course Governor Romney is going to be out there talking about this issue. But the president's concern, the president's concern is to get to the bottom of it, to bring the terrorists to justice, and to make whatever adjustments are necessary based on the investigation to ensure that in the future, that if there were uh, if there were lapses, that those lapses are addressed. All right, let's turn to a couple of other subjects. We went much longer in Libya than I expected. Your campaign now concedes that the president had a, quote, bad night in Denver during the first debate. What's he going to do differently on Tuesday? Well, I think the president, nobody's a harsher critic than the president is of himself. And he viewed the tape. I think he's going to make uh, some adjustments on Tuesday. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into detail about strategic uh, changes that he might make. But I just encourage you to watch and show up. I think it'll be an interesting debate. Do you, will he be more aggressive in taking on the Romney record? I think he's going to be aggressive in making the case for, uh, for uh, his view of where we should go as a country and a country that's built uh, around a growing, thriving middle class, not this top-down theory that Governor Romney has. But the other thing he's going to certainly do is, uh, I mean, we saw uh, Governor, Romney's, uh, Governor Romney sort of serially walk away uh, from his own proposals, and, uh, uh, and certainly the president's going to be willing to, to challenge him uh, on it, as we saw uh, the vice president challenge um, Paul Ryan. You know, Paul Ryan was on your show a couple of weeks ago, could not answer how Governor Romney would pay for his $5 trillion tax plan, and he had all that time after your show to prepare for the debate, and in 90 minutes, he still couldn't explain it. So we're going to give Governor Romney another chance on Tuesday to try and square this impossible circle. Well, we'll talk with that about Ed Gillespie in the next segment. Finally, I want to ask you about the latest numbers. Uh, in the real clear politics average of recent polls, Romney now leads the president in national surveys by a little over one point. And in key swing states, Obama's lead is now just 1.7 percent in Ohio, less than half a point in Virginia, and Romney now leads in Florida by three points. Question, hasn't Romney made real gains since the first debate, and where is this race now? I think, I think he made uh, a little bit of progress after the first debate. I think he picked up some of these Republican-leaning independents who had lost heart uh, watching his convention, watching that 47 percent tape. He got some of those people back. I think he made all that progress in the first couple of days. And in fact, Chris, this morning there's a poll out that shows the president leading in Ohio by 5 percent, leading in Arizona uh, by 2 percent. Uh, the data that I see suggests that whatever progress Governor Romney made, he made in the first couple of days after the debate in the race has been stable and we're, uh, we're, we're even or ahead in every one of these uh, battleground states. And, and the, the most tangible marker is early voting all over the country. There's a poll out this morning that suggests the president was winning 59 percent of those early voters. We have reason to believe that we're doing very well with those early voters. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of hype. And as I've said throughout, even when the polls were wildly uh, positive for us, that these public polls are all over the place. And um, the reality of the race on the ground is that uh, we're ahead. It's a little bit narrower than it was before the last debate. Uh, but we feel good about where we are, and we're, we've got a great ground game going. And, uh, and then we're going to have a great debate on Tuesday and the following week. We expect Governor Romney will have a great debate, too. He's a great salesman. That's what he did as a professional, and he's very, very good at it. But uh, at the end of the day, people are going to judge on our plans, on our records, and our vision for the future, and uh, we're looking forward to discussing that on Tuesday. David, thank you. Thanks for taking time out okay. of your debate prep, and we will all be watching Tuesday okay. night. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Up next, we'll talk with Ed Gillespie.